And we're back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the YouTube channel. My name's Dargal Martin and I'm a 24 year old real estate and off plan investment consultant here in Dubai. So I know some of my best fans have been a little bit disappointed and sad that the weekly uploads stopped for two weeks. But yeah, we've been absolutely hectic schedule and we're back at it now. Don't, don't worry guys, I'm not forgetting about you, but yeah, we're going to talk about everything today is our April 2024 review. So we're going to speak about all my stats, kind of what we went through in our March review, how I've progressed uh, with my new career in the off-plan department, what I'm learning, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah, I mean, let's just jump right into the stats that kind of we're tracking, uh, which allows us to step back, analyze our performance, see how we're getting on and how we're um, improving each month. So. Yeah, for April, pretty much bang on, same stats as we had for March. So we had eight meetings completed. Five of these were in-person meetings and three were on Zoom. And then if we go further down the sales process, we had four visits to sales centers and unfortunately zero deals done in the month of April. So yeah, this channel is all about truth and transparency about you know being a real estate agent and off-plan investment consultant in Dubai. It's not all glitz and glam. It's not everyone is billing a million dirham months every single month. And especially at the beginning when you're building out your pipeline, there's a lot and a lot of hard work that has to go in uh, that you only bear the few fruits of your labor further down the line. So, you know, I said in my last video, I'm not disappointed, I'm not making deals. I knew this game was going to be a long-term one and you know I'm definitely building long-term relationships. The clients that I do have, that I have been having meetings with, I've been getting on great with. So I'm absolutely loving the job right now and yeah, it's, it's not really bothering me that I'm not closing any deals because I know they're coming. So if we speak about kind of those meetings I had and the sales centers I visited, three of the sales centers I visited were with clients that I previously um, visited with in March. So we're just continuing and building those relationships, bringing them and uh, those clients to new projects, explaining them different investment theses, really just finding the perfect kind of investment for them. And then, yeah, one was a new, uh, a new client who I brought to the sales center for the first time. So yeah, I do have one kind of story which stung a little bit and kind of tests you mentally uh, in this game. So another, deal loss which you know I mentioned in the last one a deal loss which kind of was never really a deal loss because he never kind of said he was going for it I was just naively thinking that he was going to go for it but you know this one with, the, with these particular clients we visited I believe like four different developer sales office in total on various different days and you know the initial meeting was in our office so I'd kind of built a relationship with them the last sales center we went to was Expo City. So Expo City is this huge kind of city where the infrastructure is already built. I might throw up a video here if I have it. And you know, there was obviously Expo 2020 was held there, which is, you know, a worldwide expedition. These particular clients actually went to that uh, show. So we were very familiar with it. And when I brought them there, they were just sold and they were convinced. They told me, yeah, actually we're going to go for a three bed and a two bed apartment. So, you know, it all ca came very quickly. Uh, in the moment, I mean, like I'd obviously built the relationship and yeah, they picked the exact units out and, you know, went through the process of filling out the forms and everything at the sales center. And then finally the payment links were sent for the kind of initial booking amount and that they had to pay. And, and what happened next was something that I had never kind of been exposed to or heard of before, but these particular clients told me, listen, Dara, we're ready to go. We want to make the payments, but unfortunately we need to hear from our astrologer first. We need to, you know, as part of their faith and background, they needed to speak to their astrologer to see if it was the right time to purchase or to make this investment. So, you know, Obviously, faith is something that's important to me uh, and kind of my roots and heritage. So, you know, of course, you, you let people do what they want to do. Um, but it, it was just a little bit weird. I mean, uh, it, like I had a huge kind of paycheck incoming. I mean, I think 
the mats works around maybe 30,000 euros that I was going to close in, in my pocket, which obviously was kind of more than my annual salary back home. So, you know, I went home thinking that everything was going to be good, that I would get that money. And then, you know, for the next week or two, uh, I didn't hear from those clients. So, you know, that that's just the nature of the game is to, I don't think you can do it before you get stung, but one of the learnings is to desensitize, desensitize yourself to these huge amounts of money and to these deals. You need to do everything that you can to make a deal completed. You need to be transparent and give everyone the information they need, but ultimately someone else has to pull that trigger and it's not up to you, so don't get attached to it too much. Don't go looking at cars you want to buy or watches or suits before you actually make the money. But yeah, that was just a, a, a tough learning to go through and ultimately will make me stronger and better at qualifying clients in the future. So yeah, not too bothered by it, to be honest. And then other than that, the eight meetings which I had with new clients, I think, you know, no meeting is ever wasted, but if I'm looking realistically at who might buy this year, I think two of those clients will ultimately buy this year and told me that they will buy this year. So um, the rest of them, I'll just keep them updated with the markets and build long-term relationships. And who knows, maybe they'll come into some money and look to buy or they'll have family and friends reach out to them and they can refer me then on as well. So nothing wasted. If we're speaking about just April in total, I mean, I had the same results in terms of meetings as March. So you might be thinking, I'm, I, I didn't improve that much, but there was actually a lot and a lot going on in April. So Ramadan actually went up to the 8th of April, which a lot of people weren't interested in talking about investing. If they were local clients, they were fasting, so weren't even answering phones, and everyone was just after Ramadan, after Ramadan. Then we had Eid, which is the celebration after Ramadan. We had off work from the 9th to the 12th. So pretty much a full week off work, where I went hiking, a little bit of time to relax and obviously I was training for my boxing fight which we'll speak about in a minute but then as everyone must have seen on the news or on Instagram or somewhere there's obviously the floods in Dubai so I'll throw up some videos here of my personal experience with the floods as well <clears throat> this was on the 16th so on a Tuesday and then for the rest of the week the office was closed uh, due to floodings so I actually went into the office on that morning of the 16th and then yeah floods started happening we decided to you know office closed down it took me three hours to get home which was a 15 minute drive in and a three hour drive home so yeah you've uh, i'm sure you've all seen videos of kind of infrastructure around here and like i've had a lot of clients then come to and say to me dara why will we buy maybe like in a villa community where you're on the ground floor and everything and you know, are these floods detrimental to the market? Honestly, I think these floods were actually good for the Dubai real estate market because they showed the proactiveness of the Dubai government to actually get stuff done and get stuff fixed. You know, they've pledged an 80 billion evacuation plan for if this happens in the future. So, you know, workers going out there, clearing drains, getting everything ready. I know it, it, it rained the week afterwards and it, it wasn't the same amount of rainfall but when I was just driving to work, you could just see there were trucks ready to go to suck out and <clears throat> water from the drains. Everything was like prepared to the nines. So, you know, and also we had a lot of developers come out like Imar and some other big developers that said any damage that your property suffered during the floods um, as a result of the floods, they'd completely cover the cost of. So, you know, I think these huge kind of stress tests uh, is not a detriment to the city at all. It actually just proves how quick, quickly and, and fast they're able to adapt to these problems and put in kind of measures so that it doesn't affect the city in the future. So I actually think, you know, the floods were a great success for Dubai in proving that we're able to move forward quickly and put in plans of action so that this stuff doesn't happen again. And, you know, speaking of, it was like the worst rainfall ever in 75 years of recorded weather. I think two years worth of rainfall in the spaces of under 24 hours is just insane amount of volume of water. No, no city in the world wouldn't have had issues with that amount of rainfall. So, you know, kudos to the Dubai government 
and all the developers and all the workers as well. Absolutely fantastic job. I know even in our company, House and House, you know, all our admin staff and cleaners and stuff were working around the clock, staying till 10 p.m. some nights, weekends, trying to get everything cleaned back up and running. So yeah, kudos to everyone uh, on that front. Now, as with all these videos, I need to speak about what I've learned this month and how I'm going to improve going forward. Number one is I'm way more efficient with my calling blocks. And this is where, where you set aside maybe an hour, an hour and a half to just prospect calling, finding new clients. Uh, I'm just way more efficient at these. And you know, I had a sit down one-on-one -on -one meeting with my manager and from the beginning he set forth a task or a goal for each, uh, each member of our team is to make 150 phone dials per day. So I sat down with him in this meeting and I was like, this 150 is impossible. I cannot get to this number. I, you know, I'm very focused, I'm working nonstop, but we made some small tweaks mainly you know not updating the crm system as i go not you know sending full whatsapps as i go but just spending my time dialing answering f hanging up dialing boom 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 i've been able to kind of consistently hit that 150 maybe not 150 but above 100 um which is you know really really good volume and what you need to build up a healthy pipeline for the future so way more efficient with my calling blocks now I've been actually way better at finding serious clients and not wasting time with clients who aren't serious. So, you know, in the past, in March, what I was doing, anyone who I had a conversation with, I would add to our CRM and I would send them an investment guide and then I would spend time maybe calling them next week and sending them WhatsApps and trying call, call, no answer, no answer, no answer. And I should have just realized from the get-go that they weren't serious. A lot of the time people will just send brush offs your way and say, yeah, send me the investment guide, whatever. Yeah, call me next week, whatever. You really got to know who's genuine on the phone call and who you're having good conversations with and you're getting actually qualified information out of them about uh, like serious buyers. Like everyone knows when you speak to someone and they're just telling you, yeah, 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 send me this and brush you off. So I've been way better at just hunting for these whales, for these serious clients, and that means I'm able to give the serious clients better service too. I'm able to respond to them more often and I don't waste time just chasing dead deals. So they're kind of been my main learnings this month. And yeah, I mean, going forward, not to give spoilers or anything, but I mean, in May, I've, the first week of May, I've already had 12, meetings in the first week so bet my record for meetings of march and april in the first week of may so money may i think is coming around the corner we'll see what happens in terms of deals and yeah let's go and lastly you might have all been wondering what's this puppy doing here well this is the suited and booted big champ belt boom let's put it on the shoulder for dramatic effect so Obviously, was super busy during April with leading up to my boxing fight. So this thing was crazy. I mean, genuinely stuff uh, like made of dreams. Honestly, felt like I was in a movie. I'll share some clips, maybe some photos here. Fighting in the Burj Khalifa, the first boxing event ever at the tallest building in the world on such a stage that like professional boxers don't even get. So it was absolutely sick. And to top it off, Floyd Mayweather, Floyd Money Mayweather was sitting ringside. The goat of boxing, sitting ringside. Actually heard the commentator say after the first round, he was up cheering for the show. So, I mean, that was just absolutely insane. So yeah, got, got the W. Obviously, classic Irish v English battle. Obviously, fighting Irish coming out on top. And yeah, no, it was absolutely just sick. 10 week grueling fight camp leading up to it. So delighted it's over, delighted I got the win. And yeah, we'll see if I do the next one. So yeah, now we're in work camp. We had 10 weeks fight camp. Now we have 10 week work camp of working six days per week, putting in their graft and we'll get the big W in work as well. Yeah, guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like, leave a comment. 
any other kind of types of content you want to see, let me know. And I, I hope it's just kind of giving some transparency into what the job is actually like and the work that goes into being a real estate agent. So it's not all glitz and glam, but I mean, the opportunities out here are absolutely insane. So um, yeah, if anyone does want to book a call with me, please do using my Calendly link below and I'll be able to run you through where we see the best opportunities for investing in the Dubai real estate market right now and I'll be able to help you in identifying what your investment strategy and goals are and seeing where the best projects are for you. So yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one.